slash w comes from there. D in negates here. We have an AND gate running there for click. That's better. So this negates, which means it comes here. sets and click comes over the top and I have to use the overlap trick to get silicon through here and I can send the click signal over to these gates. So those are the bases done. Now the mecha which we will get the signal to signal from out here to the D out. So basically what I'm gonna do here is when the memory cell is on and the address is on then current will flow from I'll attach it to the permanent power supply will flow from the permanent power supply over to D over to a collective um, mix of D out because they're all mutually exclusive um, outputs because um, the address are the addresses are all mutually exclusive then it, um, I don't need to use the multiple multiple AND gate uh, method. I can just combine them into one input and stick it into over here. I should stick that out a bit more. I have to attach that to read write. So read write negates that. So I'm just going to make a two input AND gate here attach the address to it so current will only flow through it from the power, permanent power supply over to here when the memory cell is on and its address is on I don't have to repeat the the, meth the same procedure for the other memory cells This is where it starts to get tricky because, as you can see, spacing is starting to get a bit tight here. And I need to somehow power all of those AND gates. So that's the power. And I'll just make another gate here. Yep, it's almost approaching three full length episodes. And, ooh, that's a bit of a problem. I have to somehow get the address from here to here. How do I solve this one? I don't know. Or not. Just 
re-divert the metal a tiny bit so I give it room to switch from silicon to metal and back again. I can get the silicon out that end, making metal bridge. And I'll just connect all these outputs out here to each other. Just connect them by silicon there. I can run over the gate with metal because there are no Vs on it. I just need to get silicon over there. And I need to repeat that process over on this side as well, which is tedious again. It looks almost like a Rube Goldberg machine, to be honest. Now, where'd that address go? There. Which means I should probably send it over the top. Oh, that's a bit of a problem. I think I can solve it using here. So, the address for that cell is coming in here. Right. Better attach that properly. Send red down, red silicon and silicon down here. Connect those. So I've made the ooh, burp. same process. Repeat that process here. And I think I'll probably be powering it from down there, to be honest. Ooh. See how that works out. Spacing. I'll just send the address through here. Gosh, please, I might even have to split this into four episodes. That's going to be heck. Wait a sec. I can send the address over the top. Should I? Um, might not be such a good idea because I've got D out very close to it. Gonna be very tight. It's not as elegant as my written solution, but anyway, I sent the address over the top here. And I power these and gates through here. Bit of, oh wait, I can connect them through these output pin, output ends, the emitters, and those are all connected through this metal line here. Yes, that's right. So I have to connect those two output lines with each other, I'll use yellow so it stands about a bit more. And hopefully I've put everything in the right end. And I attach all the inputs into D out. And hopefully it works. Gosh, that was annoying.
Yes, there's going to be a bit of lag, but so what? So that is episode 10 in four part in three or four parts. And that is that is I would admit pretty epic and that is the most complicated chip which in terms of parts which you have to make. So I'll just see you in the next episode then.